again. A new right. film is uh, about to release in cinemas in the next few days, a film called My Neighbour Adolf, which is a, a wonderful uh, uh, idea behind the uh, possibility that maybe Hitler didn't die and is living in South America in 1960. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the director and co-writer of My Neighbour Adolf, uh, Leon Prudovsky. And uh, thank you so much for talking with me on Movie Metropolis. Hi, thank you. <laughs> now, this is such a, an, an enjoyable and, and also a darker film in some respects as well, but uh, such an interesting idea that uh, you and um, uh, Dmitry Malinsky uh, co-wrote. Tell me about the inspiration behind the screenplay. How did it all come about? Um, so actually, it was it was quite prosaic. Um, I it like it was about twelve years ago. I I went to Brazil for a film festival with my previous feature film, and um, I really loved the country. It was first time for me in, in there, and coming back here. Uh, so Dimitri, he's a, he's a friend of mine since ever since maybe forty years, and we we've been to to the film school together. So uh, I, I've been telling him about uh, Brazil and all that. He said, "Yeah, I remember this film, uh, Boys from Brazil." So. Listen, I have an idea. Let's write a script about Adolf Hitler who ran to who ran to Brazil and he's hiding there. Um, so that that was the uh, the trigger, but actually it was an an, an anti trigger because I I said that that I don't think I want to think about um like make make any reflections about Hitler, and um. And this is so. What happened? Uh, I said no. It, I don't think it's interest. It, it doesn't interest me because uh, I don't want to go inside his head. I, it's not something particularly interesting for me. But that night, I was th only thinking about that. But I was thinking about my grandmother. How how would she would have thought about about him because she was a she was a Holocaust survivor. Ah. So uh, that's how the idea was born. We're, we're, the next day, speaking to him to Dmitri. We said, uh, wait a second, it's not a film about Hitler. It's a film about how you can demonize and dehumanize your enemy in your head without without knowing him. So let's have a story about a guy who hates him and he has to get to know him. And I found that a really clever idea and I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, um, and. In in de so in developing the the story and giving the backstory to uh, David Heyman's uh, character and of course Udo Kia who is uh, such an icon of of cinema in my opinion, um, um, tell me about developing that script that story and shooting it because I gather it's set in Colombia in nineteen sixty. Well, it was shot in Colombia, but it it is set in in South America. That was uh, important right. for us, Be because it's a kind of a it's a kind of a fairy tale, a dark fairy tale. Yeah. Uh and and in such in such you would expect uh not being realistically uh, uh precise, but somewhere in Central Europe, somewhere in South America. So, and it was important for me as well. I don't I don't really know South I I. I didn't really know um, uh, Colombia before I went there, so I didn't want to use um, uh, to use the culture and historical references of that culture unknown to me. It wasn't right for me. So, so for me, it was just somewhere in South America, and we tried not to use any anything of Colombian. Uh, um, uh, even we we have invented a flag. Uh, in some scene, you can see this this very strange. Um, what was that? It was a beige, uh, brown flag, whatever. So, um, so about the process, the process. Um, what I like liked and hated about the process is that it was so freaking long that uh, we actually started writing the script when we were what like 30, 33, which is kind of young and we finished up when we were 40 something right 43 mm. whatever 42 so actually uh, like different people in different ages wrote that screen <laughs> and i think this is why uh this is why it so it is it kind of it kind of it, it has different layers uh uh in it 
And, uh, and this is why I'm so proud and I love that. And this is why uh, it was so hard to do so slow and, and, and long. Okay, well, congratulations that you persevered and were able to make the film. <laughs> it, uh, I found that so interesting. So tell me about casting, because, of course, uh, David and uh, Udo uh, are so critical to the uh, the characterizations that they portray. How did you find them, and were they easy to uh, to cast? Well, first of all, we were thinking about Paul Skibi, the main the main hero. We were thinking about him as an Israeli actor. So we started casting in Israel. And what was funny, um, and um, what was funny about that uh, is that, and unfortunate, of course, that in the same year that we started casting, there was this this TV Israeli TV show, Israeli TV series about uh, people uh, after 65, 70, so all all these really actors at that age actually they were very very busy so we didn't have any chance so we decided to go for um for an international actor and uh actually which was nice because you know we wanted him to speak english because they the the, the language between the two characters the mutual language is english so it was english speaking film in that sense and um we went to Poland, and in in, in, in Poland, uh, there were very good actors, though it was hard for them to speak English. Like uh, they, they they would have they would have put a lot of efforts into speaking English and not acting. So that was kind of something that we weren't sure of. So we tried to uh, to see some actors in the states and uh, in in the UK. And finally, um, so w- when the casting director, she asked me uh, how I see the character, I could only think about, I want someone who is kind of dead. I, I want to look at his eyes and to see that he, he, he doesn't live, he's dead. He's kind of like, in that, in that sense. And um, so when I, when she, she sent me several pictures and when I saw David Heyman photo, uh, he has this this thing in his eyes. They're very intelligent, very deep, and kind of uh, it's like a tank went over him. Um, and he played the uh, he played in this film. What was the name of the what was the title? It was uh the boy in the street pajama, something like that. Ah. And he he uh, he he made this character Pavel. Uh, in a in a in a concentration camp, and basically when I saw him in that in those scenes in the film, I said, "Oh my God, this is Polsky. This is exactly what we need." So, so we sent the script to him, and uh, he loved the script, and uh, it was it was big luck, of course, and he uh, he was ready to start speaking and all that. And for Udo, uh, Udo, he. Um, Actually, what was funny about that, that years before the show, the shoot, we kind of, you know, we were thinking about the, the dream cast, you know, just, we were just playing around with this idea. So we said, okay, this we need a German guy. He needs to speak German. He can't be an American actor. Um, what can, oh, listen, you remember this, 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 you, you know, Udo Kier, let's put him in this, this uh, dream cast, just as a joke, of course. We won't be able to get him, but let's just just go with that. So uh, you know, we, we saw him in like tens or maybe not, not hundreds. I I don't think I have seen all the hundreds film that he made, right? But like in ten like dozens of films that he made. Of course, I remembered him for, from the from the eighties when I was uh, a kid. And um, and when the casting director, uh, well, the first position that he she had. It was Udo Kier. And like, oh, no, seriously? Wow. Okay, let's try. He read the script and he loved it. And uh, he called me. I was actually here. I'm at my mother's house in in, in, in Israel and uh, on, on this balcony. And uh, he called me. I was like, oh, my God, it's Udo Kier. <laughs> <laughs> speak to Udo Kier. And, uh, yeah, so we spoke. Uh, he said, I love the script. If, you, if, you, if you'd have me, I'm there. And then he said, "Okay, okay. W- w- when we got that uh, figured out, so 
he started speaking to me about St. Petersburg, which is a city where I was born, which I left when I was a kid uh, in, in, in Soviet Union, because he, he'd been there and he loved it. And so he just wanted to speak about that. <laughs> uh, but uh, but basically, you know, that, I think I was very, very lucky. We were very, very lucky. Well, congratulations on that, because they are both so good. Um, did you do much uh, in advance, any rehearsal with their characters uh, before you started filming? Um, so first of all, I went I went to to Glasgow to to meet physically David, and we worked for three, I think it was three days or four, I don't remember. So we went through the whole script. We spoke about the character. We read the dialogues changed some things that we needed um and uh, i actually brought the uh, the israeli actress uh, for the for some scenes that we had together with them with him and we made some rehearsals with her and when coming to colombia i actually passed by udo in the states and uh in palm springs so i spent with him three days as well hmm. it was funny because it was uh, i was new year it was like I came there when it was like 30 or 31 of December and I stayed there for two or three days uh, just before going to a pre-production in, in Colombia. So we did the same. We went through the, all, the whole dialogues. We spoke about the uh, the character. Um, it was a very hard thing, very complicated, complicated thing to do to match him with the right beard because I really want him to be like... Um, hidden in this beer so we couldn't uh, recognize him right so uh so we had this this great uh great stylist guy who worked with beard in the states in la and he came there for us and we were working on that as well and then when uh, after a month of pre-production in colombia both actors came about three weeks before the shoot if i'm not mistaken and so we went through the whole thing. Udo didn't want any rehearsals because Udo, he he's a very intuitive um, actor, and he's um and he's not a theater actor. So he actually he likes uh, being there in a frame, uh, like he does in all the films that he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the other hand, David, he's a, he's a very deep. Theater, theatrical, uh, um, theatrical uh, actor. So it was important for him, the intentions and, and all that. So uh, basically what we did, we, we found something in, in, in between. Uh, we made uh, some rehearsals uh, for several, several weeks. And actually Udo, who didn't want that at the beginning, he actually got into this uh, because there was this, 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 chemistry between the two actors uh how they were friends and how they were a bit rivals as well um because udo as like the second lead uh he's a person who how to say he's a very very self-centered guy in a, in a good way and uh he uh he actually kind of fought david for uh, uh, you know, for like, uh, <laughs> like Jacob and uh, Esav uh, in the Bible, you know, who, who, who would be the first one? Um, so, uh, and David, he's a very, very, a kind of like, uh, he doesn't have any ego and he really can put it away. Uh, and he actually welcomed Udo in, in, in all sort of different ways. So that was a very, very nice chemistry. And when they were friends, when they were rivals, and uh, so basically, I think that was the core of those, of those two of the um, this, 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 this duet, this tandem. What an interesting process and uh, and development that you went through with both of them, etc. That is really, really quite fascinating. Uh, it's interesting how uh, David's uh, character. Um, with um, his uh, the loss of his family because of the Holocaust, of course, and and him being a loner and tending the black roses, which I found so interesting. Tell me about putting all that together because I, I think that that is an interesting development of uh, of a character in this film. <laughs> um, 
well, uh, the roses, uh, which of course represent the memory of his wife. Mm. Uh, at some, uh, I think it was it, it was about a month and a half before the the pre production, when I decided that the rose should be black, because they were like normal roses are uh, red roses during the whole like writing process. Uh, it, it suddenly when I started. Uh, visualizing uh, all that it was kind of how to say um, I felt some kind of a kitsch in there uh, which interfered with how I perceived the holocaust memory for, for this character so the black color uh, would have would have been something that he would mourn more than just remember so that was important for me at some point we started looking for black roses, which wasn't a, an easy task. Finally, uh, but we got them. We I think we imported them for a different uh, South American country. I don't really remember yeah. how it was. That was a quite complicated pre-production, I have to say. Um, and the um, and I think what helped David a lot is uh, first of all he's uh, uh, he was kind of familiar with. Uh, is a part of Israeli culture because uh, um, although not, not being Jewish, he lived in Israel for two years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, he was in the kibbutz and he, he had an Israeli girlfriend who, whom, she, whom he met, I think, outside of Israel and he came with her, whatever. Uh, and I, I he kind of he kind of knew, he was familiar with the, the whole uh, question of Holocaust. So it was important for him as well to get inside, to get deep inside of this, 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 uh, uh, this feeling, this um, notion. Uh, I think for about two months, or maybe four, yeah, it was quite a long process. I think we sent him to the um, to the Jewish community of of Glasgow, where he spoke a lot with uh, uh, with elderly persons, with with uh, some women and. Uh, he tried to get the accent right because you know I was kind of uh, kind of uh, worried about his Scottish accent uh, when he should have done a Polish one, right? Mm. So he really worked on that uh, as well. And uh, just you know, I, I I presented the film last month in in, in Paris, mm. and um, I have a friend in Paris who who is a guy. Who, who is, um, well, he lives in Paris, but he's British. So uh, when he saw the film, he had no idea that the actor wasn't Polish. So uh, I think it's a great uh, success for David of getting there, right? It, it wasn't mm -hmm. easy to 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 change his uh, Scottish R uh, to Polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well yeah, done on that. A, <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a nice curious. He he spoke with some Israeli uh, dialect coaches. Uh, one of them who was uh, um, Shmuli Katzmon, which is a, a very old uh, um, theater actor and director. Um, he's like nineteen six years old, I think, oh. and he speaks about eight languages and and, and he um, he's a Holocaust survivor as well. And, so um, yeah, I think uh, that that was the process of David getting into this this Holocaust memory. I would presume. Okay, well, it it comes over very well. It uh, comes across. Uh, he does a really good job. So uh, <laughs> very good to hear that. And of course, the the notion that uh, Udo Kier's character may be. Uh, Hitler, who survived <laughs> 1945. Um, I, I think that that's quite amusing. But um, how did you find working with Udo in terms of uh, being that character, which, of course, we're not going to spoil uh, in terms of how the uh, the story concludes. But, yeah. Um, yeah, working with Udo to get his character right. Um, so, first of all, it, it, we need to say that... Uh, uh, he, I think he played Hitler about three times before our film, yeah. And another, <laughs> another, another once just after. Um, I actually <laughs> haven't seen that, but there's this uh, this series 
about Nazi hunters, I think. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, people speak to me about that last two years because I think in, it went out last year. And so it's like, oh, my God, this is Udo. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so it was uh, it was interesting um, as as he, as the German person who left Germany when he was nineteen. So it's about like I don't know fifty years ago, right? Even more. Yeah. Um, it was interesting his perception of of Holocaust of mm. of Germany during the war of of Nazis and 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 and, uh, and the Fuhrer, of course. Um, he's a he's a big pacifist. He uh, he. I think uh, while speaking to him, I, I he actually even not having anything to do with that. I think he was. Wait a second. I think he was born. Yeah, he was born right after the war. He he actually grew up during the after after war uh, years, right? The, uh, right. The post-war uh, syndrome of, of kids that uh, saw their country all um, I don't burn and uh, and, and so uh, I think he found uh, some connection uh, without <laughs> without uh, uh, disclosing anything else. Uh, mm. He he found some connection in, in the character um, who he is and why he is like that and um what makes him tick uh, and um, i think we understood each other very well but it, it is very important to say that udo he's a as i said before he's this intuitive actor who fills this the camera the frame the uh the whole entourage and he becomes whatever needs to be there so um, I think that was a part of the success of his character as well. Absolutely, yes. You know, they, as I said, both of them work so well. And I should also mention Olivia Silhavi, who uh, who plays the uh, assistant to uh, <laughs> to Adolf, <laughs> um, in quotation marks, uh, and she's very good. Uh, how did you find her? Yes, she's perfect. I love her. We, we, she just called me yesterday. Um, so, um, well, that that that's quite prosaic as well. We just uh, went through about twenty, or maybe more uh, German-speaking actress actresses. Uh, the thing is that um, while it's so hard, it was so hard to find the two main actors. Um, it was quite uh, so. We didn't have like. 20 or 30 options right for her we had a lot of options it's much easier to find a 55 60 years old uh, german speaking woman hmm. um she was so precise on her edition she was i mean you see that um when she's a total actress uh, act, uh, when she works she she's this is all she does this is all she thinks about and she just wants. She just wants to to be precise, to find the right uh, uh, nuances and all that. So I, I I actually loved working with her. It was it was actually so easy because of her. She uh, she she made like ten, like dozens of 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 of, uh, of characters, um, different characters that I could watch uh, before I met her. So I don't know. She's She's such a professional woman, and uh, she made it with such devotion that I really, really uh, enjoyed that. Yes, no, she is she is excellent, and it's interesting to note because you're now based in Israel that uh, I think some of the financing of the film came from Israel. I gather, and uh, and I know the uh, Israeli financing and so on is very, very good at uh, promoting films that. Uh, um, and deal with different aspects, perhaps, of Jewish life. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm based uh in Paris and Tel Aviv. Um. Ah. Like uh, right now, uh, most of my kids uh and my wife uh, they are in Paris. So uh, um, last several years, like since the pandemic, I'm there, and but I'm I'm coming back to Israel every three four weeks. 
So and right now I'm 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 here for some time for a month and a half at least. So um, the the film was uh, was uh, um de developed by uh Israeli um the 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 Israeli Cinema Fund Foundation and uh, but finally the 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 money for like the, the we get, we got financed from a, from a Tel Aviv uh, cinema foundation, Rabinovich Foundation, and um, I yeah I, they they really loved the film the, the script, but uh, I remember it was a hard thing to imagine how are we going to 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 have it because it's an English speaking film it 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 doesn't occur in Israel, it takes place in, outside of Israel. The actors, most of them are not Israeli, so it was a hard thing to finance. Mm. But we got the money from the the the, the, the Tel Aviv film fund, Rabinovich, and uh, but then we got uh, some uh, some funds from from the Polish uh, Institute. Mm. So um, yeah, so and we got some private investments, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, overall, it was a quite a small budget. I mean, it was. Uh, very small budget um sh comparing to american independent films or european independent films it's a very small budget even sure. there sure well i always say it's not about the budget it's about the story <laughs> and so <laughs> and the story is so so interesting now i first saw my neighbor adolf i think it was last year at the jewish uh, film festival in australia in uh, in melbourne and I'm, I'm so pleased to see that the film is now releasing uh, in Australia this week. Um, tell me about how it's been received in other countries that uh, have screened the film. We started in, uh, in Locarno in Switzerland. Um, it, it was a, a Piazza Grande screening, which is a big screening with six to 8,000 uh, people as audience in, in the in the big square of the city, and it was absolutely perfect. Um, uh, the the notion that I get from all the screenings everywhere is that people, uh, well, they start by like, uh, what, what what is that exactly? Like trying to get it for the first minutes, and at some point they forget uh, about their telephones, their their uh, companions, uh, everything. They are just looking at the screen because uh, I think what we succeeded to do, at least, I hope more than that, but at least to have the attention of the viewer uh, because I think because uh, the, uh, the, uh, the twist in the film, they uh, you don't really expect most of them so it's you're like what where is it going now <laughs> and this is what we got from most of the viewers who spoke to us so in switzerland it was very 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 nice accept uh, nicely accepted then we went to hamburg which was which was kind of the same reaction well because maybe it's europe it's central europe it's uh, it's kind of the same um uh, mentality in a way uh, though German people uh, they were very very excited that it's a comedy maybe not that a funny comedy <laughs> but yeah. uh, a, a, this dark strange offbeat comedy but it's a comedy and that they loved it because they were speaking to me that uh, rarely do people make uh, films about the war about Holocaust about Hitler as comedies in 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 Germany, mm. uh, I think the only the only time it was uh, he's back. I think it was like about ten or five oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a mockumentary comedy, yeah. and it was the first time since maybe ever that someone uh, risked and made a, a comedy about that. So uh, yeah, so they really really loved it. Um, uh -huh. uh, the funny thing uh, was uh, in. Uh, in Tallinn, we opened uh, the Black Night Film Festival in Tallinn, and uh, we got standing ovations after the screening. And then every several days, we got a phone call 
uh, um, asking for us to make another screening. Finally, uh, after the festival, which was kind of long, I think it was two weeks and a half, I think, and then they they actually purchased more screen about ten screenings more. I don't know why Estonian people love that film so much, <laughs> and I'm very happy about it. Uh, but there was a very very nice period for me. I really really liked being there. Uh, so I really have to say that, um, of course, I see some people sometimes who maybe misunderstand the film or mm. like it less than most. But uh, but um, overall, I'm I'm very pleased with the reactions and how the film is received. Oh, that's excellent news. And I, I was also thinking of Danny Levy, who uh, made a film about uh, Hitler as well, uh, a comedy, uh, which, uh, um, uh, going back a number of years, I'm just trying to remember when I met Danny uh, in Australia a number of years ago. Anyway, that's not important. Was it Was it a short film? No, no, no. It was a feature film. No. Uh, and he played an okay. assist, assistant to Hitler or something like that. And, uh, and then... Okay was a double or something anyway it's <laughs> interesting all right yeah anyway not important it's it's nice to see your film and <laughs> my yeah. my neighbor at off so uh i'm i know i'm running out of time but uh leon i'm in quite intrigued i know you've made some other feature films as you've already mentioned are you working on another one at the moment yeah yeah definitely i mean uh since if about five years i i'm i've been writing a script uh so I have uh, one of the drafts. We we just got the we got to the third, second or the third um, stage of uh, in, in the same film found in Israel in Tel Aviv. Uh -huh. They really loved the script. We made the presentation last month, uh, last week, uh -huh. uh, hoping to get the uh, the finance. Uh, uh, we're planning to shoot it next year, the beginning of next year, probably like in about 10 months maybe um, and and uh, actually it's a kind of i rewrote a short film i've made about eight years ago yeah nine years ago maybe even um which was a which was a mockumentary short film uh which happens in the same place in the same time um and it's about myself coming to israel immigrating to israel when i was a kid and it's like I have this video camera and I shoot my immigration process the night of the immigration to Israel. Um, and there's this crazy thing that happens that my grandmother is dead. So there is a big bureaucratic problem with that. It's a kind of a comedy, a tragic comedy, uh, which uh, which is a genre that I really like. Um and uh, so right now, uh, I totally rewrote the script. I added so many characters and uh, like altered the story a little bit. So um, and the short film, it got so many awards in, 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 all over the world in every in many many film festivals. So uh, hoping uh, to to get it financed uh, quickly and uh, yeah, making it. I hope it happens. It sounds like it's going to be a very interesting film indeed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it will happen. The question is when, as always. Yeah, as always. I know. It, it always takes time to develop a film, especially a feature film. So I understand. Well, I'm so pleased that uh, my neighbour, Adolf, is uh, releasing in Australia this week um, at uh, cinemas around uh, uh, all the, the major cities. And it's been my great pleasure to be speaking to the director of My Neighbour, Adolf, Leon uh, Pr uh, Prodovsky. Um, and uh, congratulations on the film and thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you so much, Peter. And I hope people liked, like it in, in Australia. I'm sure audiences will. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.